know I'm not the only one that this has happened to. Insects won't help you do any of the work, but they'll be the first on scene to harvest their share. So, how do we make sure insects and critters don't completely ruin your hard work and all your crops? I think I know just the place to go to for some help. Let's go. Welcome to Green Pillars. Now last week we learned a little bit about Villy's backyard garden, right? And backyard gardens are all well and good. They're so much fun as well, but sometimes we can find ourselves with unexpected visitors like insects and pests that can lead to your crops looking like this. And so to make sure that this doesn't happen to us, we're gonna be heading over to find out a little bit about insecticides, the different kinds of pest control we can use to make sure our crops stay nice and healthy and green. So we're gonna to go to Egg Cam for that. We're also gonna find out about the different kinds of soils and which one is right for you and the two types of pH balances found in soils that will help you grow your produce the best possible. But first things first, let's go find out how to make sure this doesn't happen and about the different kinds of soils. How am I gonna make my belly soup now with this? Let's go. Today we're heading out to Wailan Dalami to visit our friends at Eggchem, a locally owned agricultural and chemical supplier offering technically focused and personalized advice to their clients in Fiji and the South Pacific. A fast developing client base and an increasing range of brands led to the construction of the current site at Lot 5 Wailanda Industrial Division in Lamy. Eggcam Limited pulled away from being a run-of-the-mill agricultural chemical seller into a market leader after going through a facelift of its products and pricing structure. Today the company hogs 80% of the agricultural chemical market and is gulping up the boiler cleaning and power cooling tower maintenance business. In the early days, their range of products was essentially agricultural chemicals for use in sugarcane production. However, currently the product range has expanded to other crops and applications. The company is now a far cry from the small operation that started in 1983 and the man behind the success of the company is Mr. Ben Nund. Mr. Nund joined Eggcam in 1990 as the general manager of the company. With his vast knowledge and experience, he has been continuously driving the company towards achieving success and reaching new heights. We have a very good family, uh, the staff here. Uh, we have a very good uh, team that, that works with the farmers. And we are very good customers. And we are what we are, what we are because of our customers that we are today. Egg Cam boasts a great range of products and services and a dynamic, well-trained and educated team of human resources including agriculture chemical manager Salisatina Manda and warehouse manager Sayed Hussein. With the vast knowledge that the team possess, they currently visit farms and villages to conduct training workshops. I think when you look out there, the farmers are hungry for information. Uh, a lot of them uh, don't have basics right. So when we go there with the wrong basics, they get things wrong. So here we have Manda and, and Sayyad, they go out and help the farmers. So if they buy our products, first we go and check their soil, we try and help them. And that's one policy that we have, if somebody comes here and buys, we make sure that is our interest that he makes lots of money, if a farmer. If a mama, farmer makes money, we make money as well. Eggcam also have a focus and passion for sustainable and organic products. What we want to do is supply uh, products that is sustainable and uh, also um, uh, the food that people eat has to be good. With COVID-19 now and that's why we are promoting a lot of our organic and sustainable fertilizer. And uh, together with that we are trying to more and more bringing the organic uh, pesticides. Huh? It's no secret that farmers, mainly ones who practice commercial farming, need to use certain chemicals to ensure their produce remains pest-free and fresh. 
However, not all follow the safety measures in place when it comes to the withholding period of consuming these crops and vegetables, which does in fact contribute to diseases like NCDs. When you look at the, the farmers, a lot of them are using products and uh, every chemical has a withholding period. They shouldn't harvest until three days or 14 days, but yet it is done. So I think um, uh, there has to be uh, testing of the, of the vegetables. Residue analysis has to be done. Some years back, uh, SPC did that and um, they found that there were some uh, foreign uh, stuff that was not even registered. So I think it's very important for the ministry to look at that and, and do uh, uh, testing, you know, residue analysis. And also it will help the, the public that uh, they are eating uh, uh, products that is safe. You don't want the overdose of chemicals uh, in your vegetables. Let's have a chat with our products expert Solicitino Manda and find out more about the safe practices when it comes to chemicals and how we can use that knowledge to combat our little pest problem back home. We have a wide range of insecticides. Uh, we have few organic insecticides which is more natural and uh, health wise is more uh, friendly and uh, we have chemical insecticides. Chemicals are toxic. And uh, for using insecticides, we have to make sure that we will supply you the right insecticides. So first of all, we need to know which insect pest is attacking your crop. Based on the insect pest, then we can advise you on the proper chemical to use. And once we do that, then we'll tell you how to properly administer the chemical. The proper mixing rate, when to apply it, and the withholding period. The most important thing for us in educating farmers is the, the application and the withholding period. Most of us don't realize that insecticides have withholding periods. The sort of uh, a safer zone when it's an indication when it is safer for you to harvest and consume the crop after using an insecticide. So you must keep that in mind. If you harvest earlier before the withholding period, then uh, I'm sorry to tell you that you are putting poison into your body, which is another cause to increasing NCDs. So it is very important. It, it's, a, it's a pity that most of the, the insect infestation there's no solution but chemicals. And uh, to get rid of insects or to avoid or to prevent them from destroying you, totally destroying your crop, you will have to use chemical, which is insecticide. But there are rules that you need to follow to make sure that by the time you harvest your crop, it is safer for consumption. So by doing that, we play a very important role in educating people to which chemical they buy and how to use it properly. Coming up, we learn more about these pest control products. Now, why don't you come with me? I'll show you the range of the insecticide that we have. This is bifenthrin. It's much safer compared to this. Pillars. Now I've got a bit of a bug problem in my little garden so I've asked my friends from Eggcam to help me find a solution. And who better to help me than products expert Celisa Tino Manda, or just Manda for short, who has more than 20 years of experience in this field. A pure science student with chemistry and biology as his strengths, it's no surprise that Manda manages and helps to formulate all their agricultural chemicals. More often than not, you'll find Manda out on the field helping train farmers on how to administer chemicals like insecticides, weedicides, fungicides and fertilizers. There's a few things that uh, the smaller details we tend to neglect when it comes to farming. See, most of these caterpillars, bugs, they feed on leaves. And when you walk into an area, you clear all the bush and then you start planting vegetables, you, you, you 
removing all the food source which they are feeding from. And by planting your crops, for example, cucumbers, lettuce, beans, you offering them a better alternative for food. So you must keep in mind that these creatures are all around and they will eventually will come and take a bite or two. So once you are prepared for that, then you can always prepare how to counter when, they, when an infestation happens. So then it comes into insect monitoring. So you know exactly when they start feeding and you know exactly what to use. Otherwise, when that happens, you'll be running around asking, how did this happen? Or oh, where did all these insects come from? They were already there before you clear the land and start planting. If you're dealing with uh, insects, they are, they are live creatures. They feed, they drink, they breathe, and they communicate just like us. And for them to survive, they need to feed. And when you plant an area, you remove all their vegetation and then you plant an area, the crops started to grow up beautiful and healthy. And all of a sudden, you have these signs and indications that they start feeding on one plant. Leaves are eaten, the stems are eaten. Those insects start coming in and they start, ah, this is a better food source. So they started coming in and they start munching on your vegetable garden. You must realize that they will communicate with each other. And comparing vegetable crops that you're planting to the leaves of the trees and the bush that were there, you're offering them a better food source. So you must expect them that they will migrate from wherever they are in the bush to your garden to feed because they know within three months you'll be harvesting that vegetables and they will no longer be able to feed on that. So by doing that, they'll, you'll be more prepared once you plant your crop they'll be more prepared for what will come next. Now, why don't you come with me? I'll show you the range of insects, uh, insecticide that we have that uh, we might be able to help you with solve your problem that you're facing at the moment. Okay, these are the range of insecticides that we have. Eh? Okay, there's albrol, white oil, there's hotiga. There's a different, uh, with a different active ingredient. Yeah. I'm showing you, I'm holding two in my hands right now. Yeah. This is Dazinam 20, it's an organophosphate. It's one of the oldest chemistry that we have. It's been in the country since we started. I mean, with the company since we started yeah. supplying into the, the agriculture sector in Fiji. There's two strands. This is Dazinam 20. The other one is Dazinam 80. That is specifically for domestic pest control. This is mostly used for agricultural use. So this other one is a new generation chemical. It's a synthetic pyrethroid. This is bifenthrin. It's much safer compared to this. The withholding period, eh? just to, to show you how safe a product is compared to the other one. See, this old chemistry, the organophosphate one, if you look at the label, yeah. most of the crop listed, the withholding period is 14 days. Oh, okay. So, which means after 14 days of applying, then it is safer to harvest the crop. Well, this one is a th synthetic pyrethroid, it's a new chemistry. It's only three days for me, the holding oh. period. So from 14 days to three days. Oh, wow. So these are the things that we teach farmers yeah. to be aware of. So in terms of if they need to do, if there's an insect infestation on the crop, yeah. well, closer to harvesting time. So they can choose it. And there's, there's a beauty of these two products. One is this one, it's the AKMBT. It's a biological insecticide. Yeah. It's derived from uh, soil. And then when it's applied on the crop, it's uh, after one day it's safer to consume the crop. What, hap what happens, once it's applied on the crop, the bugs comes in at night and feeds on it. The next day when the sun comes up, it's exposed to ultraviolet light from the sun. The sun rays from the sunlight will break it up. So there's no residue, residue after one day. So, so this is safer yeah. compared to this, which is 14 days. Right. And then to this chemistry with its three days and the biological one within one day. Current farmer practice, sometimes or most of the times is way of the line. If you look at it and we've seen it, that farmer is doing something else on the crops that is supplying to the market for the public 
he's planting a different crop and he's following the right program for his own consumption. Now that comes down to to the applicant's ethics, yes. So in that case, that farmer, I, I witnessed it because it happened near to my place. Yeah. I was coming in the afternoon and I saw this guy spring. And walking afar from the farm, I can smell and I know the chemical by smell. Yeah. And walking and I saw this guy spring up, first row, come back the second row, go up the third row. And to my surprise, I saw his labor. So these two girls start harvesting from the first row. The chemical is still on the crop. And I asked the girls, are you harvesting that thing going to the market? Yes, tomorrow. And I told the girls, you're not supposed to be working. The chemicals that it drops on your skin, it get absorbed through your skin pores. The chemicals, these chemicals affect us the same way it affects the insects. So even though it, it, it gets absorbed by a small amount, but still long term it builds, you do that every now and then, it builds up within your body. Yeah. And that in causes a rise in NCD. And for a farmer, harvesting that, supplying to the market the next day, he's not worried who's going to get it, as long as he gets his return. For him, what he wanted to supply the crop to the market without any insect on it. So it looks good, people will look at it, it's clean, no insect, no insect bite, so they buy it. But what they don't realize, what's on the crop? It's a whole different story altogether. This, for us, that's where it's important for us to address all these two farmers. The proper use and the withholding period. Because this is, you're dealing with life. Yeah. Insects are always out there. Uh, it's a way of natural selection. A weaker plant will always become bug food. So when you plant, that comes to a whole different topic regarding the soil and the health of the plant. So you always have insect infestation. So the awareness that you'll have that they will come and how to prevent that from, I mean, to, to prevent the total destruction from insects up so, in, so that you don't lose the whole crop, that you'll harvest and enjoy what you plant. Up next, we speak with Sayed Hussein about soils and fertilizers. Now it's very important to know the kind of soil you're working with. Is it light and sandy or is it heavy and clay like the one in my hand? There's also a thing called pH levels. So is your soil more alkaline or is it more acidic? These are the things you gotta know before you start your farm. Before you go out there and buy plants to put in your soil, try and find these things out. You could, if you're not sure, you could look around, maybe see your neighbors and see how their plants are growing and what their soil looks like and you could know. Or like us, today we're going to go and meet our soil expert, Sayed Hussein, who's going to tell us more about the different types and how to read or how to get that perfect pH balance in your soil. Meet Sayed. Having studied agriculture at FNU with an attachment with the Ministry of Agriculture, Sayed joined EGCAM in 2016 as a technical sales assistant. His daily work includes being out in the field with farmers and working closely with distributors to understand the market needs. First of all, you need to uh, check your what uh, what kind of uh, soil you've got. Like we have, uh, we uh, there's uh, clay soil and uh, sandy loam and uh, sandy soil. There's different types of soil, and uh, checking your soil through our pH meter gives you the soil pH instant instant pH reading and uh, different crops uh, needs different pH level and uh, when we go to the farms uh, and the first thing we do is the soil pH we need to check the soil pH we don't need the soil samples you need to take it to the lab and it takes time farmers don't they don't want to wait for quite a long time and then we have this pH meter you just poke it in it gives you the soil pH instant soil the pH after knowing the pH, we make a tailor make uh, we may uh, tailor make the the farming program based on the on our sustainable and uh, organic uh, fertilizers uh, that uh, that can give a farmer uh, the, the yield he expects. The reason why we introduce this product in Fiji is to to uh, 
for the farmers to carry, uh, I, my suggestion would be to carry, every farmer should carry this. Because taking a sample, getting taking to the lab, get the results, the ch test done, and by the time they'll give you the result, the soil structure has changed. Yeah. So this pH will give you the pH rating instant. So I'll just do a demo. First of all, you have to wipe this with a clean cloth and just poke it this, poke this inside. So from the looks of it, what does it, what does it look like to you? It really, it came up to 6.4. Which is what? Like more in it's, the... Uh, the or? best pH is mostly 5.5 .5 to 6. Yeah. Uh, 6.4 is not bad, but yeah. a little bit of... Uh, our tete blend would uh, really boost uh, the plant up. And uh, what's in the tete blend? Tete blend contains N, P, K and uh, 13 trace elements. It's 70% uh, organic and 30% chemical. That chemical is coated with organic carbon, so yeah. it doesn't damage the soil biology. Yeah. And it has about it has calcium and other sorts of nutrients to for the for plants to feed on. Soil is just a medium to hold the plant. It's what you give to the soil if you give the give give soil a good uh, uh, products it will definitely give you a good yield if we were to stick this thing in this pot okay uh, what would it be the same because they're from the same sort of no. area or what if you want be? to take a PA's reading for a large scale farm you need to take a random check yeah so once you take a reading you take it out you wipe it again yeah and you poke to the second spot okay. 5.5.5.2 So this is 5.2. This is the soil that was in the bucket. Bucket, yeah. And then the one on the in the ground was 6.4. Yes, because uh, normally when it rains, the uh, the flood water comes in. Yeah. So that's why the pH level is not that good. The one in the bucket, it's we normally apply lime in it to for the plant to boost boost it up. If you've been using too much of NPK, urea, your soil in about a couple of years, your soil will turn acidic. So by using this pH, it will give you the instant reading whether it's acidic or alkalinity. Alkalinity is mostly when you, you're living near the sea, the salt water comes in and alkalinity. So our product called gypsum, it helps remove salt from the soil. And to increase the soil pH level from acidic to the expected uh, pH level for the crops, uh, you need our lime. We got in two kinds, uh, it's in powder and it's in liquid form. Both are certified organic to increase the soil pH uh, for the soil. This cost $155. And just imagine if you can, if you take, like, if you ask, uh, I mean, uh, if you take the soil sample, you you make your way out to the lab and you give them the sample and they come with the result by then I mean you wait for so long this just give you the instant pH and you know what to do you know what to apply and you can just come to us we'll give a farming program based on the soil pH and then you're good to go with our organic and sustainable fertilizers unfortunately that's all we have time for but join us again next week as we put our newfound knowledge to the test and make ourselves a hanging herb garden so Green Pillars is the show for you if you're interested in a little bit of the farming, whether it's backyard, whether it's commercial, we have so much more in stock for you. So please do tune in, same time, same place next week. We'll see you then.